Hi everyone. In a causation study or a study that examines uh, association is often a controlled experiment. And in a controlled experiment, the independent variable may be introduced or manipulated either by the researcher or by someone else who is providing the service. In such cases, there are two sets of variables, active variables and attribute variables. In today's video, I will take up an example where I will show you what does the meaning of these variables is and uh, how can you identify them in your research. So hopefully the example will be easy for you to understand and the knowledge that you derive from this video can then be used in the context of your own research study. So let me take an example here that you are trying to study the impact of the teaching models on uh, the nursing students. So there are uh, some teaching models and I will explain those teaching models and you are trying to study what the impact of these teaching models will be on these nursing students. So let's take the examples. So let's say the first example is a flipped classroom where you are trying to study what happens if you can save the student, students time by providing them with the notes and the lectures beforehand so that they can study and they can come prepared in the classroom and you're trying out a model like that where, where instead of them coming to the class and then receiving the lecture for the first time they pretty much have information beforehand and they know what to expect in the classroom that's called a flipped classroom then you have something uh, that you are trying out where you're trying out small group instructions where you might separate a small group and you are trying to see what happens uh, if you teach a smaller group uh, in comparison with uh, if you teach a bigger class. So let's say you've taken a big classroom and you have separated them into uh, three groups and uh, these three groups are being um, subjected to these different uh, kind of uh, teaching models to study their impact on it. All right. And the third one is where you engage the third group uh, into project based learning. So where the students are asked to engage in projects to benefit the most out of uh, what you deliver in classrooms. So again, um, you are trying to study the impact of these three teaching models on the students learning or their academic achievement or their scores towards the final exam or towards a certain test. Now, these three teaching models can be manipulated by you as a researcher. All right, why can it be manipulated? Because when you take a bigger classroom, let's say you have a classroom of 30 students and you want to separate them into three separate groups to subject them to these three teaching models. Uh, you choose and you can choose them at random, but you pretty much can choose the three groups uh, based on uh, what you feel would be the best combination. Uh, you can choose which group is subjected to which model. Uh, you can choose what kind of projects you use in project-based learning, uh, how you go about delivering the small group instructions. And you can make changes in the small group instructions uh, based on maybe if you are studying a, a, a group of uh, students, uh, you are doing a longitudinal study and you learn from one group, uh, you can implement some changes in the other group. Uh, just giving an example here, normally we don't do that. But, uh, and then, you know, uh, how do you go about flipping the classroom? So what kind of content do you release? So you, all those things are in your hands as a researcher. So any, any things that you can change, uh, any variable that you can change, uh, then becomes your active variable. So active variables can be manipulated, changed or controlled. And the structure and content of the teaching models here is an example, and that will vary from researcher to researcher. So how I go about conducting a small group instruction may be different from how you go about doing that. So, and this will have an impact on, uh, of course, the student achievement, the student scores, the overall learning, because how I choose to uh, use those teaching models, if it is different from how you choose to do it, although we are using the same teaching models, but how we go about delivering those teaching models or using it may be different from one to the other, and that will have an impact on the uh, student learning as well. How you go about allotting the groups, whether it's random, whether it's um, uh, carefully planned, um, uh, or there's some pre-selection criteria that you're using, again, that will have an impact. So anything that I can manipulate, I can change, I can control as a researcher uh, is called active variables. And uh, let's take an example of what are attribute var uh, variables. 
so let's take the same uh, group of uh, nursing students so let's say we have the same uh, classroom of nursing students of 30 students and we are allotting them in groups of three uh, however uh, when we allot uh, them in groups of three uh, there are certain variables we can't control for uh, and which will also may have may have it may have an impact on the teaching model that we are using or the any kind of experiment that you're doing or the overall all the overall learning effect so attribute variables are those which cannot be manipulated changed and it pretty much reflect the characteristics of the population so let's say you divide them into groups of three um, how the gender of the group you cannot control that or the gender of the classroom you cannot control that you cannot control the age of the students in the classroom uh, you cannot control the motivation that they come with so you may have uh, students allotted into three groups and you may have done it completely at random but one group may be highly motivated to learn and no matter what teaching model you use on them they will go about go on to achieve high academic scores um, uh, whereas one group may be uh, less motivated and you may use the best teaching model of them or the one that you think will bring the best results and they may still get low scores uh, similarly religion uh, these are characteristics of a, a sample or a population uh, that cannot be uh, manipulated and these might have an impact on the teaching uh, or the teaching mode in this case of course it may have an impact on the overall uh, result of your research so in this case again i can tell you that if you have small group instructions but you have people from religions who are uh, who don't feel free to mix with uh, different genders so there could be someone a, a lady a girl from a particular religion who's not very comfortable in a small group instruction uh, with uh, highly uh, or uh, mostly male population so then she will not learn the way a girl from another religion might who's uh, who doesn't mind mingling with the opposite sex or the opposite gender uh, similarly the age so someone might be uh, older or more experienced more knowledgeable and they might uh, benefit more or someone might be so old that they are not being able to adopt to the teaching model that you are using it may be too unfamiliar for them and they may not be able to adapt to it because they are not used to it and they may uh, their learning may suffer as well so these are things or these are variables we don't call things has, these are variables that you have no control over but it may impact your overall research and these are called attribute variables so active variables are those variables you can manipulate you can change and attribute variables are those that you cannot change and they pretty much reflect the characteristic of the population um, i hope you found this video useful if there is something that i have missed please put it in the comment section the whole idea behind uh, making these videos is that we can learn from one another and thank you for watching today's video please subscribe uh, please like and i look forward to your comments bye for now